All right. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. And my name is Carrie Potter, and I work with Family Matters. I'm an information specialist here. And I also have experience with early intervention. Um, as a parent, my daughter went through early, early intervention years ago. So I do have that knowledge from a parent point of view as well. Um, and I just wanted to say the focus of today's meeting is to discuss the importance of understanding your child's strengths, needs, and abilities. And the Early Intervention Clearinghouse, Early Choices, and Family Matters have partnered together to bring five monthly um, sessions from January through May. And then these sessions are going to focus on discussing information and resources that address early intervention family outcomes. And then, you know, like we said, we really want to focus on identifying your child's strengths, needs, and abilities. So there are a lot of ways that you can do this as a parent. Um, I think to identify your child's strengths and abilities, what their interests are, what their areas of needs are, um, you can really just observe your child in everyday settings and look at what their activities are that they're involved in, what are their routines. Um, these kind of just natural settings and daily um, opportunities to observe can really tell you a lot about your child. So, you know, you can observe your child in ordinary activities in and around your home, like looking at books, um, building with blocks, using finger paints, playing with toys, um, during meal times when they're eating, and even taking a bath. You can look at what, you know, what skills they have um, and where they're at currently. You can also look at how do they interact or um, get involved in activities outdoors or in the community, you know, maybe playing in the yard, or how do they interact at the park, going to the library, to story time, things like that, um, even in the grocery store. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can really observe your child. Um, you can, when you're observing them, you can look for how do they interact with different objects and materials. Um, how are they in different surroundings, you know, in those different settings, such as home, maybe in daycare, the grocery store, things like that. Um, you can remember to watch for how your child shows curiosity, how they explore their environment, and really look at what their strengths are. What are they doing good with right now, or what are they able to excel at and do well with? Um, you can also pay attention to the things your child does to interact with you and other adults, how they communicate with you and show you what they need. And then you can use that information um, to learn about your child's strengths and you can match, you know, their special interests and abilities with everyday learning activities. And you can always be looking for new opportunities to offer to your child. So when you know what they can do, what their strengths are, what their needs are, then you can look for new ways um, to build on skills with them. And as a parent, I think it's important to know, you know, no one knows your child better than you do. Um, as a parent, you are there all the time or majority of the time. You're more there more than anyone else. So as a parent, you know their cries, their laughs. You know what kind of moods your child has. Um, and your child also knows you very well. So you have a relationship with your child that gives you, you know, quite a bit of information that you can share. Um, and parents think it's important to know that as a parent, you are a critical member of the early inter intervention team. Um, you know, when your child is receiving services, there's always a team and multiple members that work with your child and, and your family, and you are a critical part of that. As a parent, there are many things that you can do to help your child. Um, providers may meet with your child in your home or in another setting, such as daycare, but most interventions are going to happen between visits because providers are only going to see your child for that short visit, but then you're able to incorporate what you've learned and what the providers are working on with your child in home and in other settings. Um, so you see your child in many different settings throughout a day and a week and you see what their strengths are, what their abilities are, 
and you see what skills that you would like to focus on improving um, and moving forward on. As a team member, um, like we've said before, parents are an equal and important team member. As a parent, you can share with the team what you and your family feel like is most important for your child. So if there are things that you want your child to be able to do in the home and skills that you want to build on, then you can share that with the rest of the team members in early intervention. Um, and some questions that you may ask yourself or un other team members could include, what benefits do I want my child to receive from early intervention? So when you really think of where you're starting at when they enter early intervention, you know, you can always think about where do I hope to see them at the end? What are goals? And you can make short or long-term long goals and, um, you know, really share those with, with the team members. And you can also ask, you know, what will be different or better for my child and family when these changes occur? So what, what outcomes and changes do we want to see as a result of receiving early intervention services? I think communication is always important and key um, to meeting a child's needs. So the more communication between team members, the better, because everybody's on the same page and they know what you and your family would like to see for your child. Like we said, parents are experts on their child. Um, so any information that you gain or have on your child is important and helpful information that you can share with other team members. So you can share things about um, what your child's able to do in different settings. So when you're observing them, you can make note of what you're seeing them doing and share that with providers and early intervention team members that are working with you and your family. You can share information about your child's likes and dislikes, what their favorite toys are, if there's certain games or songs they like, um, their favorite people, if they seem to, you know, work on certain skills better for certain people, you can share that with the team. And, you know, sharing information about what your family likes doing together is helpful, as well as what you'd like to see your family be able to do together. And, you know, when team members know what you have as goals, then they can help you build those skills with your child. Um, it's always important. I think it always helped me as a parent to find ways to share information about my daughter with her early intervention team members and providers. So I did want to share a resource, um, a guide for families from the early intervention program it does have a couple of great resources. Um, on page 12 and 13 that help you kind of map out what information you'd like providers to know about your child. Anything that, um, I mean, depending on your child's individual and unique needs, they may qualify for services after they transition from early intervention. So, I think any of the knowledge and skills that you build from working together as a team during the early intervention process is going to help you if you find that your child is eligible for services in early childhood or through the special education system as they grow and transition beyond early intervention. So, you know, working together as a team, those skills will help you later in life if your child does need um, those services later on. And we did want to share a lot of um, resources with you. There are links to multiple resources, which I think will be shared in the chat as well. Um, there are a lot of resources on child outcomes that may be helpful developing family-centered outcomes with your early intervention team. Um, there are, is an article from Paula Kluth about strengths and strategies that is very helpful. And then, like I mentioned, there's the guide for families, the early intervention program guide for families, and that does have a lot of different information about early intervention and your rights. Let's see, just partnering with your child's assessment team, that could be helpful, you know, maybe give you some insight into ways to communicate with the assessment team. Um, and I do want to leave time to take any questions or comments in the chat. 
but I did want to say that if you have any questions, I've included information about all of the different organizations that are involved in this. If you have questions and want to talk to somebody more individually about your child or different questions you may have, you can contact us at Family Matters. Um, Family Resource Center on Disability covers these counties in the Chicago area. They're the other parent training and information center. And then the Illinois Early Intervention Clearinghouse um, is available to help as well as early choices. All right, well, thank you. And again, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we will get this recording shared. Thank you for your time.